Amen. Very good. Let's take our Bibles and go to Colossians chapter 3 tonight. We're going to be in Colossians chapter 3 for this evening, and uh, we'll be in verses 15 and 16. Uh, there's something I want to speak to us about tonight that uh, has been heavy upon my heart today. Uh, I just see that it's lacking in a lot of people's lives. It's obviously lacking in the lives of the lost people, uh, but many Christians are lacking this as well, and uh, they find themselves uh, in a mindset that God has not called us to be in. And uh, in Colossians chapter 3, if you're in verses 15 and 16, the Bible says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Tonight I want to talk to us on the subjects of the Word of God and the grace of God in our hearts. And let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Father, we ask that you would please bless the reading of your Word. Father, we ask that you again would allow the Holy Spirit to take the sword, which is the Word of God. Father, pierce our hearts with it tonight. Uh, Lord, reveal to us uh, hidden things in our hearts that are a hindrance uh, to our faith, a hindrance to uh, our walk with our Savior. I pray, Father, tonight that you would help your people to get victory in their lives. Lord, I pray that you would show yourself mighty uh, on our behalf tonight. Father, I ask that the Word of God would be uh, lifted up tonight in our hearts and our minds that we, Father, our hearts would, would long for uh, the truth and the promises of God's Word. Father, I pray that you would guide us according to your will tonight. As always, Father, we want you to be glorified Father, we commit this hour to you, and Father, we ask that you would establish our thoughts and uh, settle our hearts. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. As we look at these verses tonight, again, I want us to think about the Word of God and the grace of God in our hearts, and when you think about the hymns that we sang tonight, the, uh, the, the great hymns of the faith that we have sung, Where He Leads, I'll Follow, All for Jesus, Joy Unspeakable, all three of those are possible for the children of God if they will hide God's word in their heart, if God's word will be the center of their life, the center uh, of their focus each and every day, because obviously we know that comfort, the peace, the wisdom, uh, the guidance that comes through God's word. But if we are going to follow the Lord as he leads us, uh, our hearts have to have the word of God richly dwelling in them if we're going to have joy unspeakable the word of god has to be uh i would say the medicine that we take when our hearts are uh sorrowful when we when we find ourselves becoming anxious and fearful uh over uh, over life over situations if uh we're going to do everything for jesus all for jesus Again, the Word of God has to be the focus of our life because obviously when you think about uh, all the men and women that we read about in the Scriptures, uh, they believed the Word of God. They followed, they followed the Word of God. They allowed themselves uh, to hazard their lives. They allowed, they allowed themselves to lay down things that, uh, uh, that, that was near and dear to them. I think about Peter and John. Uh, and, and James and the other, I mean, their livelihood was fishing. Uh, no doubt they probably enjoyed fishing, but when the Lord Jesus called them to follow, they set that aside and they followed the Lord with their hearts and with their lives. And tonight, as we just think about it, as I think about it and have thought about it today, again, many are in, in desperate need of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Uh, they're in need of salvation. But God's people are in need of a of a new desire or a renewed, I should say, a renewed desire for the word of God. And I want us to see that tonight as the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. And we're going to be, our main text is verse 16, but I want you to understand in verse 15, we're told, let the peace of God, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Uh, only you and I uh, can allow the the peace of God to rule in our hearts. Uh, we can't force God to give us his peace, but when, you, when, you, when all you're doing is focusing on uh, what's going on in the world, you're focusing on the pandemic, you're fo focusing on the 
uh, the what ifs and the unknowns and, and you're allowing the news media uh, to be your source of truth and your source of guidance and you find yourself just uh, huddled up on the couch fearful and full of anxiety and, and not knowing what to do, not, not able to trust anybody. Uh, you find yourself really out of the will of God. God says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. God wants us to be at peace. He wants our minds to be at ease, no matter what's going on in our life. And it all, again, it, it centers around the word of God. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Again, we're told, let the word of God. Just like we have to let the peace of God uh, rule in our hearts, we have to let the word of God dwell richly in our hearts. And tonight, to start with, I want us to understand that we're to be filled with the word of God. Uh, as a child of God, as a born-again Christian, uh, again, our hearts need to be saturated with the word of God, because truth from God's word will comfort us, will guide us, it will give us the joy, the peace that God wants us to have. And God actually commands it. He says, let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. Tonight, we need to have a renewed desire for the word of God. We're told in 1 Peter chapter 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I'm afraid that many of us uh, have become desensitized uh, by the news media, by social media, uh, by the entertainments of this world, and we no longer have a desire for God's Word. We no longer have a hunger for God's Word. We're not even anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're not being sober and vigilant. We're not watching uh, for the blessed hope uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ's return. Uh, we're focused on, on everything else. And the Lord says that our hearts are to be filled, our hearts are to have the Word of God dwelling richly in them, because again, as a child of God, God wants to do something in your life and through your life. He wants you to follow Him uh, every day of your life, but there are times when He wants to call you to a specific work, whether it's talking to somebody, whether it's going somewhere, and we need to be in tune to the Lord. God calls us, let His Word dwell richly in us. If it was not important, God would not have get, given us his written word. Uh, he, would, he would just have left, it, left us alone just to know that we're saved and, and wander this life, just uh, making our own decisions and choices and, and hoping that we're going in the right direction. But God loves you so much tonight that he didn't want you to keep wandering around in darkness. That's why he redeemed you from the power of sin. That's why he's given you and me uh, his Holy Spirit to guide us, to comfort us. But we have to let the Word of God dwell richly in our hearts. We must be filled with the Word of God, and it must be constant in our life. Notice what it says, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, to dwell in you. All right, We may know the Word of God, but is it dwelling in us? Do we meditate upon the Word of God? Do we have Scripture uh, that we can bring to mind and that we can quote and that uh, it'll bring comfort to us. Uh, it's not enough for the children of God to, to have a Bible under our arms. We have to allow the Word of God to dwell in us because, again, God's Word is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. I mean, God's Word, yes, it convicts the heart, but it comforts the heart. It guides us. It gives us the wisdom that we need. And honestly, the Word of God has all the answers that people are looking for. It has all the answers. And uh, many, will, uh, many will overlook it. Many will scoff at it, criticize it, dismiss it. Uh, but the wisdom of God, He has given it to us in His Word. But we, we have to let it dwell in our hearts. And not only do we need to constantly allow it to dwell in our hearts, but we also need to completely let it do what God wants it to do. Notice what it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, richly. I mean, think about this. Uh, Jesus calls us to abide with him. All right, in uh, John chapter 15, verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, 
Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Notice Jesus says, if my words abide in you. Even Jesus calls us to let the word of God dwell richly in us. There are many of God's people that are dealing with depression. They are dealing with anxiety, with fear that they don't necessarily need to. They're looking, for the do- they're looking to the doctors for, for a pill to take away their anxiety. They're looking for all kinds of things in this world to comfort them, to, to calm them. And yet, God has given us uh, a book. God's given us his word that encompasses everything that his people need, and yet we are neglecting it. Tonight, my heart's desire is that God would stir our hearts again, that God would set our hearts aflame for his word, that the word of God would, it would be cherished by God's people, that we would desire it, that we could not go a day without reading it, a day without praying through it, a day without meditating upon it, a day without thanking the Lord for it. Listen, tonight, if you are struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anxiety, I understand there's there's, there's all kinds of things that kind of go hand in hand with that. There are, uh, you know, just situations that have gone on in your life. But let me tell you, if you're a child of God, I want to ask you this. When was the last time you read your Bible? When was the last time that you cast your cares upon the Lord by faith, believing that he would help you? Because again, the word of God brings comfort. The word of God brings peace and joy. And we as the children of God, if we are looking to the ways of the world uh, to minister to minister to our hearts and and minister to the things that we are struggling with, we can't expect God to bless it. We can't expect God to help us if we're looking to, I'll say, the idols of this world. The children of Israel often in, in when you look in the Old Testament, they often turn their back on the true living God to go after idols that could not help them. And yet when they got to the end of themselves and they would cry out to God, you read in the book of Judges, they would cry out to God because they were under oppression by their enemies. And listen, if you're following as a child of God, if you're following the idols of this world, if you're following things that are being lifted up by man, man is saying, hey, this will help you to sleep better. This will help you to, to be calm and at rest. It's not of God. God's not going to help you with that. You're going to be in bondage to that. God wants you to be free. God wants the word, his peace uh, to, to, to rule your hearts. He wants the word of God to dwell richly in you. Because again, when you have the word of God dwelling richly in your heart, God's word is what's going to guide you. The Holy Spirit's going to bring to your mind scripture that will comfort your heart, scripture that will remind you uh, not to fear. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. That's Psalm 56, 3. I mean, God's word is complete for us. Uh, in James chapter 1, verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now listen, I understand we live in a, in a day and age where obviously we want things instantly. Uh, we want things, we want our food to be instantly cooked within a matter of seconds. Uh, we want, we want uh, our life to change how we want it to change, and we don't want to wait. But listen, if we want God to work in our life, if we want our hearts to be enriched with God's peace and with the truth of his word, look, it takes effort on our part. God says, let, let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. Uh, George Mueller, many are familiar with this man. George Mueller said, once the vigor of our spiritual life will be in exact proportion to the place held by the Bible in our life and our thoughts. Again, the vigor of our spiritual life will be in exact proportion to the place held by the Bible in our life and thoughts. How high do you hold up God's word in your life? How dear is it to you? Let me ask you this. I'm not trying to be offensive tonight, but how much dust is on the cover of your Bible? How worn are the pages of your Bible from you reading it, not from it being neglected and tossed about and and thrown under uh, couches and stuff and shoved in crevices and corners, but 
because you've been reading it, you've been saturating your mind and heart with the word of God? Are the pages tear stained because you have been reading God's word, he's convicted your heart about something and, and you've wept over that conviction and you thank the Lord for how much he loved you for speaking to you. Listen, I know God speaks to us in many different ways. I mean, you look at nature and, and nature speaks about the Lord and, and God, you'll hear that voice behind you saying, this is the way he walk you in it. But there's something about picking up God's word and looking at the pages and reading it knowing it is a, it's truly a love letter from God to you. Uh, I remember, and still my wife will write me notes and stuff, but I remember uh, when her and I first started dating in high school and stuff, and, and um, we didn't have a lot of classes together, and sometimes we'd, we'd see each other in the hallways as we were uh, going to different classes, and, and she'd slip me a little note, and I, I mean, I, it was burning in my hands. I couldn't wait to open it and read it. I anticipated the things that she would say in it, and I'd get to class uh, before class would start, and I'd, I'd unfold it, and I'd read it, and all oh, my heart just melted because I was in such love with her, and, and I just loved reading uh, her letters and stuff and kept them for years. I mean, just had a, a huge box of, of these letters that, we, that I had from her, and, and uh, even today, I love see, getting letters from her, and she loves getting letters from me, but listen, there is someone that loves you uh, a lot more than your spouse, a lot more than your children, a lot more than your best friend, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he speaks to us through his word. I pray tonight that our hearts again would, would burn for the word of God. You think about the two disciples on the road to Damascus after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, after he had rose from the grave, and, and there was great talk about what had happened, and, and these two were uh, walking to Emmaus, and and, and a stranger came up by them and said, hey, what, uh, what's this conversation you're having? Why are your countenances so sad? And, and you know the account, it ended up being Jesus, and he expounded to them the word of God, but he didn't reveal himself to them until they invited him into their, into their house where they were staying. Uh, he, he, he prayed over the bread, he broke it, and when he did, the Bible records that they realized uh, they were allowed to see it was him, and, and he... He vanished right before them. He disappeared. And they said to, one, they said to each other, did not our hearts burn when he, when he expounded the word of God, when he opened up the word of God to us? And imagine, does your heart burn when you read God's word? Is your heart thrilled or is it kind of something on a to-do list? It's part of cleaning the house. You check it off and, and you're just glad it's done. Or, or do you long for it because you know it's God's word, it's God's truth, and, and God has something for you? When you go to God's word, do you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show me wonderful and marvelous things out of thy law? Uh, Jeremiah said that in the book of Jeremiah, when, uh, when the roll, when he saw this roll, this flying roll coming to him, uh, he, the, God said, take it and eat all of it. And the Bible says, of course, Jeremiah took this roll, he ate all of it, and he said it was sweet as honey uh, in his mouth, but it was bitter as it hit his stomach. Uh, just the fact that God's word is sweet, but again, it can be convicting as well. And I pray and hope that tonight that we would be filled with God's word. We'd have a desire to be filled with God's word so we would not struggle uh, with depression, with anxiety, because our focus would be on the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gives us victory only Jesus Christ can give you victory over what you're struggling with. If you're struggling with doubts of salvation, only the word of God can show you the truth, whether you're saved or not. If you're struggling with depression, only the word of God by Jesus Christ can bring that peace and that comfort into your life. Second thing I want us to see tonight in our verse is that we are to be faithful with the word of God. We're to be filled with the word of God but we're to be faithful with the word of God. Notice what it says in verse 16. Uh, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. God calls us not only to be filled with the word, but we're to be faithful with the word. What you're learning from God's word, we need to share it with others. Again, you may not be struggling with any, any type of, uh, you know, depression or fear or any, anything like that, but you may know somebody else. Are you capable of taking the word of God and sharing it with them 
exactly what they need that will help them. Obviously, if they're lost, you want to be able to share uh, the gift of salvation with them by showing them in God's word. But you want to be able to give them God's word so they can see that, hey, you know what? I can trust God's word. But you know what? It takes a person who believes and trusts and lives God's word to be able to help somebody else. Again, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Do we believe that? Again, many people believe in the writings of men, and they will study the writings of men, and they'll follow the teachings of a man. But as God's people, we need to follow the teachings of of Jesus Christ. We need to follow the teachings of God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I mean, God's word gives us what we need to live our life. How am I supposed to raise godly children? It's in the Bible. How can I be a more loving husband to my spouse? It's in the Bible. The Bible tells us how to do it. How can I be a submissive wife where I let my husband take the lead and guide our home and be the leader. It's in the Bible. And, and honestly, the things that we struggle with in our homes, you know, can be dealt with through God's word. I Many of the problems that we have in our marriages is because God's word is not the center. It's not the foundation of the marriage. It's not being used uh, in our marriages, in our families, in our homes. How can I be uh, a better employee i mean god's word is so rich and and it's so deep that uh we're barely scratching the surface even tonight on the topic but i want us to really think about letting the word of god and the grace of god dwell richly in our hearts in titus chapter 1 verse 9 holding fast the faithful word uh, as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Again, holding fast the faithful word. You know that God's word is faithful. It's true. Uh, there, there has never been a time where anybody has been able to uh, find fault in God's word. And many have proclaimed there's fault, proclaimed there's error, but it's never, it's, it's never been uh, proven because God is not a man that he should lie. His word is perfect uh, it is inspired, it's God-breathed, and you and I can trust it tonight in our lives to guide us, to help us, to comfort us, to help us to have that joy unspeakable. Again, when, <clears throat> when, uh, when I felt like the Lord was calling me into the ministry, I went to the Word of God. I spent time praying. I spent time reading the Bible, and God showed me several verses uh, that I, weren't, I was not even looking for. I wasn't, to be honest, you know, most preachers probably won't do this, but to be honest, uh, I was looking for verses that I could say, oh, no, see, God's not calling me into the ministry because of this verse. But I found the contrary. I found verses where God spoke to my heart and clearly showed me he was calling me into the ministry. And because he was calling me, he would be the one to do it. And what a wonderful promise that is. The Bible says, he that calleth you will also do it. I can do all things through Christ. If God's calling you to do something, he's the one that's going to give you the ability to do it, and he's also going to be the one that does it through you. Because again, God wants to work in your life. God wants to have a closer relationship with you. God wants his word to be sweet, uh, sweet in your heart, sweet to you. He wants you to desire it. He wants you to uh, plan your life with it, build your life upon the foundation of God's word. But also, we need to exhort others about danger. You know, we can tell somebody, hey, you know, that sin is going to cause heartache in your life. And someone say, well, how do you know? You know, we can give them our opinion. We can give them uh, maybe some facts that we've heard. But when we take the word of God and we share it with somebody, not to judge them and belittle them, but to help them, God's word is again sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word is powerful. God's word can break the fallow ground of a person. God's word obviously can comfort. It can do everything a person needs far better than what we or man can do. 
The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. Again, it's not just about constantly telling people that they're wrong, that they're living in sin, but telling them what God's word says, telling them, hey, God loves you so much that God doesn't want you uh, to be living in misery. God wants you to be living in peace, and he wants you to have joy unspeakable in your life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, the last thing tonight is that we have to be fervent in the word. Again, as a child of God, as someone who has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I know that there are times in our lives where we kind of get away from the word of God. We know it's true, and we might you know, pick it up here and there and, and read, a, a read a verse that means a lot to us, and that's all we ever do. We just kind of read the verses that mean a lot. But when we're fervent in the word of God, we're fervent in reading from Genesis to Revelation. And we, have a, we actually have a reading plan uh, where we go through the word of God for our own benefit. It benefits other people. I tell you, it benefits your marriage. It benefits your family. It benefits your coworkers, your neighbors, all of those uh, people that are in your life. Because at any given time, the Holy Spirit's gonna prompt you to share something with somebody. And somebody may talk to you about something in their life that they're struggling with. And the Holy Spirit brings to your mind a set of verses maybe you read that morning and you were meditating on it and you're able to share that with them. But listen, how can we be effective for the Lord if we don't have the word of God dwelling richly in our heart? How can we be used of God if we are vessels that are not being filled with the word of God? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Uh, the last thing I want us to think about, obviously being fervent with the word of God, God's put a new song in our heart. And we can sing praises to the Lord. And you think about, again, when you go through the book of Psalms and, and you put it to a song. Again, uh, many, many of our church family know that because I say it often that Psalm 48 is one of my favorite uh, psalms, and that's verses 1 and 2, because I've put that to a song, and, and I sing it to myself often, driving to work, driving home, being out and about. And there's other verses, other, other scripture that I'll sing too. There's just something about singing God's word, not just reading it, but singing it, singing his praises. I mean, can you imagine God's word, and you're singing it to him. You're praising God with his own word, what comfort, what peace that brings to you. But oftentimes I've been singing God's word and God has spoken to me, not about the verse, not about the scripture that I'm singing, but he's brought to mind some other verse, some other reference, some other Bible reference that helped me with what I needed help with at the time. God is so good to us. But not only do we have a new song, but God has given us obviously a new spirit. You know what? Uh, there were times in my life before I went into the ministry, I have to admit, even in the ministry, I've, I've had a bad attitude at times because I've had a rough day or something, but I remember before going into the ministry, uh, getting off work on a Wednesday and uh, rushing home and trying to, get, trying to get the family, get ready, get to church, and, and uh, you know, whatever had happened that day, I was still thinking about it, and I just wasn't in the mood to go to church, but I still went because I knew that's where I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to be doing. But, you know, I start singing the songs, singing the hymns that, uh, that have been picked out for that evening by the, by the song leader, and you're just kind of going through it. You know, it doesn't, it's not, at first it doesn't mean anything, you're just doing it. But then as you focus in on it, I'll tell you what, the words even from the hymns are bring, because they have so much truth and so much biblical doctrine in them it reminds you of how good God is and and really how you know what no matter what happened during the day we don't need to carry that into a church service and honestly whatever happens in your day uh, in your workplace that doesn't need to be carried home your family doesn't need to be a part of uh, what had ever happened during that day uh, because again they weren't there they're not part of the problem, obviously, our families and our homes should be a haven of rest. But you know what? It will be, it can be, if our hearts will 
uh, trust in the Lord, if our hearts will dwell richly, have the word of God dwelling richly in our hearts, because you know what? When our focus is on the word of God and it's dwelling richly in our heart, and if we'll listen to the voice, we'll listen to that soft, still voice behind us that says, this is the way walking in it. And again, th there's times where God rebukes us uh, for our attitude, and the word of God helps us to have a new spirit. It helps us to have a new spirit. A Psalm 30 and verse 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So again, you know what? When you're having a bad day, stop and just reflect on the goodness of God. Sure, the, sure, the, the moment, the situation may not be that good, but guess what? Those moments come and go, but God is the same. God's faithful all the time. God never changes, and we can praise him for how good he is and praise him for his faithfulness. So when you think about it, to allow the word of God to dwell richly in our heart, it will change our attitudes. It will change our thinking uh, towards life. It will help us, honestly, to be more at peace, to be more at rest. Uh, people will notice it. You know what? There, are, there have been men uh, in my lifetime where when they entered in the room, you just sensed, you sensed the Spirit of God. You sensed something was different. There was a peace that kind of came in with them, not them specifically, but who uh, they were fellowshipping with, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell you what, when we fellowship with the Lord and we allow his word to dwell richly in our hearts, as the Bible tells us, we'll have a different spirit. Our spirits will be right. Our thinking will be right. Our speech will be right. Uh, we won't be uh, carried about with the storms of life. We won't be tossed about uh, as waves. We'll be stable. We'll be established because of the word of God has been established in our hearts. And we need to let it take root in our heart. God wants you to be stable. God wants you to be able to help somebody else. Uh, again, let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. Let the grace of God dwell in your heart. And I tell you what, there is joy unspeakable uh, when we allow that to happen. And uh, we will see the goodness of God working in our life. And I tell you what, uh, you, you will have a better attitude. Uh, you'll have a smile on your face. Uh, you know, when, when, when the dog, uh, you know, chews up the furniture, you'll smile at it and, and uh, you won't, you won't get so irate about it. I mean, just because the word of God is dwelling in your heart. Tonight, I just want to encourage you with that truth. Listen, as God's people, let's not neglect the word of God. It should be the most dearest thing to our hearts outside of our salvation through Jesus Christ, that he's given us something that, you know what, even if the book itself is taken away from us at some point, in this country, we have the word of God hidden in our heart that it cannot be taken away. Oh, what a blessed promise and hope that is from the Lord that his word will be what we need it to be. It'll be our comfort and our guide. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father, for just the truth of your word. Father, I ask that you would. Lord, we are living in a time where there are other things in this life that seem to take precedence in our life, other things that uh, take, they, they take our attention. And I pray, Father, we would get back to the basics, that we get back, Lord, just to the basics of, of your word, that we would start building on the word of God again, allowing it to be that foundation in our marriage, in our families, in our homes, in our worth ethic. Uh, Lord, just allow it to be a part of every area of our life, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Help our faiths to grow, Lord, and it will grow if we will allow the word of God to dwell richly in our hearts. Lord, I pray that it would be sweet, sweet to the taste, sweet in our mouth, and Father, that, Lord, we would just desire it more and more and more. Father, help us to be used of you to minister to other people, whether it's ministering comfort to them, whether it's ministering uh, the gift of salvation through your word, showing them the way of salvation through your word. Again, give it, reading somebody some scripture that just brings comfort and peace uh, to the soul and to the heart. Father, we ask that you would continue to be with us, continue to guide us throughout this week. 
Father, help us to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to have that mindset that he must increase, I must decrease. Father, we ask that you'd be glorified. Help us, Lord, to sing the new songs that you've put into our hearts because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, I pray and hope that you'll spend some serious time just asking the Lord to uh, renew that desire within you about his word. And if you already have that desire, you haven't lost it, ask the Lord to increase that desire. Again, we need God's word to guide us. We need to build our faith upon the word of God so that we can help others as well. I hope you have a wonderful evening and a good rest of the week. God bless you.